What is up guys, Faded here and welcome back to the channel for another video and today we're going to be covering the all new IdeaPad Y700 gaming laptop. This of course includes the powerful GTX 960M 4GB version with the all new Skylake 6700 HQ processor. But before we dive too deep into the specs and everything like that, let's take a look at its overall design. Lenovo once again turns to its tried and true brushed metal design that they have used for a number of years now, and the entire housing is using the brushed metal aluminum this time, and it gives it a very solid feel. Now Lenovo didn't stray too far from its previous design at all, keeping things quite familiar, and even the very similar closed vents in the rear on the left and right side even going so far as to keep the same lid slants on the edges. But hey, why fix something that's not broken, right? I will say though, this definitely gets them that gaming appeal that they are looking for. A market that they are learning is quite profitable. So let's turn our attention to connectivity. The Y700 makes no changes in connectivity from its last generations, sporting the usual dual USB 3.0, HDMI, Ethernet jack, and a Kensington security lock, as well as a new standard power port, the always-on USB 2.0 slot, and an SD card slot, as well as your headphone and headset jack combo. Though they did adapt their recovery button, they made it a pinhole this time, so whereas before you might accidentally click the button and then people would freak out, but now you won't have that problem unless you were intentionally grabbing something to put in the pinhole to recover your hard drive. But let's go ahead and flip it over and take a look at the bottom. Here at the bottom we have a continuance of the brush metal design, which it was previously plastic, so I like that it's brush metal here as well, kind of gives it a solid feel all around. Now we have a subwoofer which is centered and it's closer to the user so it does give that decent bass without a one-sided feel. Now towards the top we have our intake vent, which I really like the heat dispersion system that they have chosen to go with this time around. They intake through the bottom and they exhaust out the rear panel, which makes loads more sense and was definitely a big problem in the early Y series and a lot of the Y series customers were demanding improvements on heat dispersion. Now let's take a quick look under the hood. The first and most noticeable thing is the keyboard. Lenovo's favorite style keyboard makes its return once again. Shrunken and moved around keys are a trademark of Lenovo's chiclet style keyboard. Though I do have to say the keys feel very tactile and they are quite responsive. I really enjoyed typing on them and I did not notice very many errors at all. And for us gamers, they finally throw us a bone with the WASD keys being outlined in red. Also returning is the Lenovo Red backlight with two brightness settings. Once again, it's the very same. You have one setting of on and then one of slightly brighter than on, which for me, I don't really like the fact that they don't give us a lot of customization there. It's practically not even bright enough. I would like for it to be a little bit brighter or give us some more options. Now, JBL Audio is on board once again, and it delivers some quality sound on these beautiful speakers with a slanted design where the speakers are actually firing at you as opposed to straight towards the ceiling. So that's a very good use of design process here and an awesome use of physics. Now the palm rest this time is perfect. It's just spot on. It's a rubber based material which is dark enough to keep the design flow, but it also does a great job at reducing fingerprints, which has always been a problem on the Lenovo laptops. I really have to say the palm rest is just perfect. Now the touchpad, no problem here. Plenty of room to move around and swipe and no conflicts with gestures either. Very solid execution and I think this touchpad should continue to be their touchpad well into the future. You also see our badges here near the corners which show us a few things that Lenovo is offering us in this nice package. An Intel i7 6700HQ processor clocked at 2.6 GHz, 16GB of DDR4 RAM clocked at 2133MHz, and also a GTX 960M from NVIDIA with 4GB of VRAM, and all that to go with an awesome IPS LED backlit wide viewing angle monitor. Heck, this is starting to sound like the perfect editing PC. Though more on editing in another video, I'll have a link down in the description whenever that is ready. An IPS panel with all the power to make use of it, which is starting to sound like there's gotta be a catch here, which sort of there is. The listing does say anti-glare, which is normal for non-touch models to have anti-glare. But still, I was starting to get suspicious. And it turns out that Lenovo chose to use an anti-glare plastic film to go over their screens. Oh man, was this a mistake. Everything looks so washed out, and when gaming, you can see the lines on the anti-glare cover, and it just looks disgusting. So I did what everyone else would probably do, and I took my wife's blow dryer and a pocket knife, and I peeled that ugly piece of garbage off. After a good hour of tugging away, we find underneath a beautiful 
glossy display. Colors are mouth-watering. They are so spot on, not even a shred of light bleed as well. Though being IPS, we did lose a tad bit of brightness. Nonetheless, the colors are beautiful and it's the best Lenovo screen I've seen to date. Though if you're fine with 60 hertz, Lenovo is still lagging behind on that part. They want to make gaming laptops, but they still haven't figured out that maybe giving us some higher hertz would be greatly appreciated. And now for storage. 128 gigabyte SSD with some pretty good speeds as well. You can see them on screen. We have a one terabyte 5400 RPM hard drive, which I can hardly stand anymore how companies are choosing to go with 5400 RPM hard drives. I mean, Battlefield 4 already takes forever to load and I don't need to wait another three minutes just for my hard drive to catch up. And battery life. The four cell battery brings us an average lifespan. I got around an hour and a half of gameplay on the battery, which I don't see anyone getting over two hours. And this is while gaming, even with power saver on. Though during normal use, like writing the script, I was able to squeeze almost five hours out of it on 75% brightness and balance settings. So it's got a good body, the screen looks very nice, after a huge adjustment of course, and it's also got a decent battery life, but how does this thing perform? I'm going to keep this thing in the realm of gaming, I have another video dedicated to editing and rendering side of things, but for what most people came here for, and that is the games. The GTX 960M hangs with the big dogs, but think of it as the lower tier card in a group of new GPUs. It's got all the latest bells and whistles like Shadowplay and Maxwell technology, but it's nothing spectacular. Part of my gripe is that the 960M was in the last gen model and it almost seems like they had a surplus of GPUs laying around and it decided to just go ahead and use those instead of finding something new. So this makes it hard for me to recommend to anyone coming from the Y50 models at all whether you're using the 960M or even the 860M models. The one big improvement is temps. I never once saw temps go into the 80s on the CPU or the GPU. The new cooling system is phenomenal. And while running it through 3D Mark, the temperature on the chassis was around a comfortable temperature and not once did my palms ever get sweaty through this entire review. If you want to see exact performance in games, I have many gameplay videos to choose from, so just go ahead and check a link in the description below. And with that, it does bring me to my final conclusion on the new Y700 from Lenovo. It is no doubt a beautiful machine, and it brings all around great performance, and it makes strides in many, many different areas. But coming from the last iteration, I am not sure if it's worth it. I mean, we do have DDR4 RAM, a Skylake processor, which for content creators, I would say yes, it is definitely worth it to upgrade. But for the general user, especially us gamers, I just can't recommend you upgrade. But if you are coming from, say, a Y5 10P or any other brand, then now is a great time to upgrade. This PC is great all-around performance and truly an enjoyable experience. If you guys have any more questions or anything that I left out or anything that you want to know about this PC, please leave a comment down below. And as always, be sure to like the video, comment, and subscribe for more awesome content. Thank you guys for watching. You guys have a good one.